I'm Craig Gentry, and I'm a research scientist here at uh, IBM TJ Watson Research Center. I'm a cryptographer. You probably know about encryption. Uh, you might have even used it before. If you've seen the HTTPS in your web browser, you've used it before. And what I do is I try to design uh, encryption schemes that have more functionality than just a basic encryption scheme. Fully homomorphic encryption is a special type of encryption scheme that allows anyone, anyone that you know, they might not even have the secret key, to perform useful operations on the encrypted data while it remains encrypted without the decryption key. Well, I have a, a physical analogy for fully homomorphic encryption. Um, uh, it's called Alice's Jewelry Store. And so Alice owns a jewelry store, and she wants her workers to turn raw materials like gold and diamonds and silver into rings and necklaces, but she doesn't trust her workers. Is she creates these glove boxes that have locks on them, and she puts the raw materials inside and locks the box with her key, and then she gives it to the workers, and the worker can stick his hand inside the gloves and manipulate the raw materials inside and create the ring or necklace. And then she unlocks it, and she pulls out the finished piece. That's what I try to do with cryptography, some sort of digital analog of that. What you might like to do with cloud computing is store all your data out in the cloud, but maybe you don't trust the cloud provider, and uh, you want to encrypt that data. But on the other hand, later, you might want to extract certain files without telling Google which files you're extracting. But with a fully homomorphic encryption scheme, what you do is you just encrypt the number of the document that you want. And Google can magically sort of extract that, uh, that file without knowing which file it extracted for you. Of course, it sounds impossible that you could do this, that uh, someone who doesn't know what he's manipulating can manipulate it in a meaningful way. Uh, but cryptography is full of paradoxes like this. In a lot of situations, you might think you have, you know, if you want a certain functionality, you might think you have to give up your privacy. But it turns out that that's false. Your, your common sense is wrong. And uh, cryptography has uh, solutions for pr uh, problems that allow you uh, to make functionality consistent uh, with privacy. You don't need to sacrifice uh, privacy or civil liberties. Uh, so there are a lot of research issues to be tackled. There's a lot left to do, and um, for FHE, certainly we have to make it much faster uh, to make it practical. At the moment, I'm diving a little bit into a big new goal, a complexity theory, which is uh, sort of studies which computational problems are easy or hard, versus cryptography, which just takes hard problems and tries to create crypto systems out of them. You know, instead of the ceiling, I'm trying to sort of go to the floor and, and consider what's at the foundation of uh, cryptography. I view the fellowship as validating me and my approach to research that I just, I, I investigate what I'm interested in. I almost have too much good news. I mean, I have a, a daughter that's gonna be born uh, in a week. My, my mind is sort of exploding. <laughs>